Hello. Today we will be solving this problem. It's called it's called coin piles. Basically, we have two piles with A and B coins respectively, and on each move we can either remove one coin from pile A and two from pile pile B, or the opposite, two from A and one from B. And we are asked to determine whether or not we could reach, we could make both piles empty. Like in this first example, we could take away two from here and one from here and get to zero. So the answer is yes. Here it's impossible because if we take away two from here and one from here, we'll be left with one here and we'll be stuck. And the same would happen if we took away two from here and one from here. Here we could take away two from here and one from here and we'll be left with one two and doing the second operation would get us to zero so let's see what kind of constraints these conditions put on a and b let's try some examples so for example let's say a is equal to 50 and b is equal to 5. can we can this be possible so the logical thing to do is to take away 2 from a because it is larger than b and take and to take away only 1 from b and if we do this we could only afford 5 moves because that's the size of b after 5 moves b would be equal to 0 within these 5 moves we'll be able to take away only 2 times 5 which is 10 from uh, a so we'll be stuck at at 40 so this means that a can be at most 10 so a should be less than or equal to 10 for this to work so basically there is a relationship between the maximum of a b and the minimum of a b and namely max a b should be less than or equal to 2 times min a b otherwise a solution wouldn't exist because even if we take away if we perform min a b moves it wouldn't be enough to take away all of uh, max a b so are there other constraints on a and b on each move we take away two from this side and one from this side or one from here and two from here but the invariant in both cases is that we take away three from the sum of a b so in each move uh, the sum sorry the sum of a b goes down by three so this becomes sum minus three and at the end it should be equal to zero so this means that since this is congruent to zero mod 3 so this is congruent mod 3 is equal to zero so this means that this initial sum should also be congruent to zero mod 3 because in each move all what we do is take 3 away so if we started with a equal uh, 2 and b equals 3 so their sum is 5 so their sum is 5 and in and each move we take away 3 so after the first move we'll have 2 and we'll have to stop here because this is not congruent to 3 mod to 0 mod 3 so this gives us our second constraint our second constraint is that a plus b should be equal to 0 mod 3 and if both of these conditions are verified then the answer is yes otherwise the answer is no so this is it for this problem let's go ahead and code it so let's go ahead and code our solution we said that we have to deal with test cases 
So let's declare our variable for test cases. Let's read t and y t minus minus with read a and b. And we will verify the conditions we talked about. So a and b could go up to 10 to the 9th. And the conditions we have to verify is that their max is less than twice their min and their sum is congruent to 0 mod 3. Here the sum will not overflow so we don't need to lose we don't need to lose we don't need to use long long. So all what we need to check is that if a plus b mod 3 is equal to zero and max ab is less than or equal to two times mean ab that means that the answer is yes else the answer is no and we need to paint a new line that's pretty much it so one three three yes so let's submit. And this works. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.